G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and I'm down the back here in our picnic area. It just overlooks our poultry pen with our chickens and ducks and quail and this is at the back of our property. We like to come down here in the shade of the trees. We do have a nice large umbrella in case the sun gets a bit hot. We bring down table and chairs. We have a picnic table already down here and we throw a bit of bread to the birds, have a barbecue and really it's a terrific spot for family and friends and just even myself to come down here and sit down in a while. This video is all about building a fire pit and then turning that into uh, not only just a wonderful camping experience picnic area on your own property but also a really handy tool to use to cook meats and especially our Peking ducks that we grow ourselves. So a picture tells a thousand words without any more rambling on. Let me get into it. I'll build it and as I build I'll narrate over the top of the video so that you can see exactly how I do it. Alright so here we go. The first thing I did was site my fire pit. So I made sure that it was in an area where it wasn't underneath any overhanging trees. It wasn't in a through fair where people were walking past all the time. It wasn't in the way when I went down to get the chickens. So it's just in a good spot and away from pretty well everything. But it's also in a location where people can sit around. Here's some of the equipment that I used, all the materials. You got the garden bed, but you could use any type of steel rim in the middle. Obviously, I've got a leveler. I've got some masonry glue. This is this Sally's Liquid Nails. You can get all types of masonry glue as long as it's a masonry or a brick glue. I've got some paving sand. I've got a mixture of coarse sand because that's good for drainage on the bottom and for laying the the bricks and the loose sand is good for putting in and reinforcing behind the rim. Then I went ahead and just mapped out the area. So I did a dry run. I wanted to see how big it was. I wanted to make sure I had enough blocks. In this case it was 53. And once I would got it all right and I knew how high I wanted it etc. I knew I had to dig it in and a rough sort of estimate, I went around and started marking it out. I just used some stencil spray there that builders use on work sites and I made sure that I gave myself a little bit of extra room and I did a couple of inches out marking around the bottom of or the base of that. Then of course I dug it out get rid of all the grass because I had a fairly uneven spot and I had to dig one side quite a long way down probably about three or four inches once I got it roughly dug out then I wanted the outside of where I was going to lay the blocks completely level so I used the leveler and I just went diagonally across first making sure the, um, the furthest way pavers were level and then I started working inwards uh, between pavers and also individual pavers making sure they were all level and all the same height. Of course this is really important because by the time you get to the top of your stack or your third row, uh, if it's not level it's going to be um, look bad but also not work properly. It's going to be uneven and it's going to be cause problems anyway down the back. So once I've got it all level I then reposition my rim centrally. Like I said you don't have to use a galvanized garden bed but this really works well. It's about 40 centimeters high or foot high and a uh, 90 centimeters or three feet wide. So I thought that was about a good size. I then laid some of that 
paving sand this is the coarse sand which is good for drainage I laid that down in the bottom and then I walked it in to make sure that it was properly bedded down so that I could start laying the bricks then you see that these bricks here they have a locking mechanism on the back a, um, a lip and they need to go downwards because then each brick on top or block locks in behind the other one and it tears backwards into the rim. So I went around and positioned them nice and carefully and then lightly with a mallet knock them down use a level if you have to but if your grounds level beforehand you should be right make sure there's a gap of at least two inches between the rim and these type of blocks because you tear them backwards if you don't leave a gap at the bottom, you're not going to have no room and they won't fit up the top. It's just a matter of carefully putting, them, putting the blocks all back and making sure that the, especially the bottom and the, and the second level are nice and, and even. You're not going to get them perfectly flush against each other. These medium sized blocks are okay for making circles but they're not terrific. Um, and so you're going to have a few gaps here and there because you won't get it perfectly round if you don't have a few gaps. I then of course need to dig the rim down. So I take the rim out, I, I, I work out how far down I have to go and then I dig out just around the outside of, or the inner side of the, of the blocks. I put the rim in and make sure that the rim is around an inch or two below the surface of the bricks. Another reason for the rim is to protect those those concrete bricks from actually deteriorating quickly from the heat and the fire. And then the sand between, which is what I'm doing now, insulates them. I take the top layer of bricks off, otherwise it's, it's because it's easier to put the sand in. I prefer to use the, the light river sand for this job. I used a little bit of coarse sand there, but mainly the light river sand is easy to pack in and I really pack it and squash it down. I use the end of a rake there to push it in and compact it down and also fill in the cracks between the blocks on that second level and make sure that it's nice and compacted before I go ahead and do the third row and it's the third row that I use the masonry glue or masonry cement and glue the, the, the final row or the top row of blocks onto the fire pit. Make sure they're in place because in about 15 minutes they'll start setting and then I fill the gaps a bit like a gap filler with the same stuff. Put it in the gap there, rub a finger through it, push it in and that's going to give it extra strength and also fill those extra wide gaps and then the final thing I do is put the rec pack the rest of the rim there between the rim and the blocks with sand which shouldn't be too much because the main bulk of it is down the bottom give it a clean off and then let it dry overnight or 24 hours I use the rest of the sand that I had left over just to put in the bottom clean the, the job up and that's it done So there we have it, a solid good quality fire pit made from pretty well easy to find everyday landscaping supplies materials. My aim is to give people ideas, let the brain juice flow, um, I'm not in it to tell people exactly this is the way you should do it. If this gets some better ideas and you can produce and make a better one than this, that's great. Um, please link it down below or put your uh, comments down below on how you could improve on this or what you did. Even better, go to our forum, selfsufficientculture.com. You'll see where I've put this on there and had a bit of a discussion about it. So you can add to that discussion. You can put your pics of your own pits on there. Whatever. The bottom line is, this is a easy to do, great project. It took me about six hours. 
you've got your galvanized ring on the inside that keeps everything together you've got the standard landscaping bricks that are mainly used for retaining walls but tear back and give the whole thing strength and work really well with this type of project and they're really easy to find sand paving use a leveler and it's a pretty easy job to do I hope you got something out of it I'm gonna now add a spit roast to this and I'll be doing some more videos in the future on how I use my fire pit but for now this is how you build a fire pit with a galvanized metal ring standard landscaping bricks and standard landscaping materials without too much fuss thanks a lot for watching Bye for now. Oh.